In today's lesson, we're going to take a look at how we can factor quadratic trinomials using a method that I call slip and slide. Remember, a quadratic trinomial looks something like this, 2x squared minus 11x plus 12. Now let's begin by going back to when we worked with polynomials for the first time, and we had something like x minus 4 times 2x minus 3. When we multiplied these, we saw that we could use the distributive property and then combine like terms. We ended up with a nice trinomial like 2x squared minus 11x plus 12. But what if we started with a trinomial and wanted to find those two factors? Well, today I'm going to show you how to do that. Essentially, we're going to take exactly what you see here on the screen and flip it all upside down. We'll start at the bottom and work our way up to the top. Example 2 is exactly the trinomial we just saw. We have 2x squared minus 11x plus 12. Here's what we do. We look at the number in front of the x squared and the number at the end that has no variable attached. 2 times 12 is 24. Now we write all the numbers that multiply to 24. 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, and 4 times 6. Don't forget the negative numbers also. We could have negative 1 times negative 24, negative 2 and negative 12, negative 3 and negative 8, or negative 4 and negative 6. Now let's take a look at our trinomial again. We're looking for that pair of numbers that adds up to negative 11. When we go through the list, we find that negative 3 plus negative 8 gives us negative 11. So now we're ready to do our work. We'll keep the 2x squared and we'll keep the 12. We're going to slip out that minus 11x and we're going to slide in the minus 3 and the minus 8, each with x's attached. That gives us 2x squared minus 3x minus 8x plus 12. Now we're going to look at two separate pieces here. We'll start on the left and then we'll go on the right. We bring the minus sign, which is in the middle, right on down. We look at the 2x squared minus 3x. We factor it using the greatest common factor. 2x minus 3 and x are the factors of that binomial. Now we take that 2x minus 3 and we put it on the other side. Finally, we look at the binomial on the right hand side, the 8x plus 12, pull out the greatest common factor, and now we're basically done. Our two factors are x minus 4 and 2x minus 3. Now let's compare the factoring we just did with what we did earlier when we multiplied the two binomials. When we multiplied the binomials, we used the distributive property, combined like terms, and ended up with the trinomial. When we factored, it's like we uncombined the like terms, and then we undistributed, ending up with the two factors. Notice that the steps for example 2 are exactly the steps on the right hand side except backward. Really, factoring is undoing the distributive property. Let's take a look at another example. In example 3, we want to factor the expression 2x squared minus 7x minus 15. We want to begin by multiplying the 2 and the negative 15. 2 times negative 15 is negative 30. Then we list out all the factors of negative 30, the pairs of numbers that will multiply to negative 30. Negative 30 times 1, negative 15 times 2, negative 10 times 3, negative 5 times 6, negative 6 times 5, negative 3 times 10, negative 2 times 15, and finally negative 1 times 30. Out of those choices, we wish to find the pair that adds up to negative 7, the number in front of the x. It looks like negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7, and so there are my pair of numbers. So I write down my 2x squared and my minus 15, and I'm going to replace that minus 7x with minus 10x plus 3x. Now let's begin our factoring. We'll bring down the plus sign that's in the middle of the two halves and we'll factor one side at a time. On the left, we factor out a 2x 
and we're left with x minus 5. We can check to make sure that's correct because 2x times x is 2x squared and 2x times minus 5 is minus 10x. Then I take the x minus 5 and put it on the other side also. On the second side I look for the greatest common factor. The greatest common factor is 3. Once again, I can check that this is correct by using the distributive property. 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. Finally, I can write my factors. I have 2x plus 3 and x minus 5. If you want to check to see if the your answer is correct, all you have to do is multiply those two binomials together using the distributive property. Once you distribute and combine like terms, the answer should be 2x squared minus 7x minus 15, which is what we started with. The next example we're going to look at is example 5, and this one's for you to try. Use the examples we just did as a guide, and try this example see how you do. Please pause the video here. Let's see how you did. 3 times 8 is 24, and so I listed out all the factors of 24. I wanted the pair that added up to positive 10, the number in front of x. 6 plus 4 is 10, and so I rewrote my expression 3x squared plus 6x plus 4x plus 8. By the way, it wouldn't matter really which order you put the numbers that you slid in there, the 6x and the 4x. You could just as well have written 3x squared plus 4x plus 6x plus 8, and it would have worked all the same. Now, let's factor out the left-hand side. We have 3x times x plus 2. We put the x plus 2 on the other side. The greatest common factor is a 4. I can double-check my work by using the distributive property, and I see that it does come out okay. So my two factors, 3x plus 4 and x plus 2. Now, there are a whole bunch of examples in this packet that you can try. I encourage you to pick one or two of them, give them a try, and then check your answers on the screen that follows. And here are the solutions to examples 4, 6, 7, 8, and 9. You now know everything you need to know about factoring quadratic trinomials.